Hey everyone, Peter from Argo. Thank you for sending in your questions. Um, I'm gonna do three videos this time around and uh, yeah, a wide variety of questions came in. Thanks again for sending them all. Um, before I start with the questions, we also just put out an operational update. So I just wanted to give you a quick kind of overview of those numbers. Um, we mined 163 Bitcoin for the month of April, down a tiny bit from the month of March. Uh, we currently hold 963 Bitcoin and um, we did a revenue in April of 6.7 uh, million pounds uh, or over $9 million, uh, which is a good month. So yeah, look, uh, mining margins still really strong, over 85%. Um, so we're, we're pleased with the results and we're pleased with our 2020 results. I think some of you um, sent in questions about that. So I'm gonna get to, to those in a sec. And um, you know, I think uh, in general, we're, we're happy with where we are. Okay, let me jump into the question. So, first question from XASX, sorry, from XASX96. That's tricky. Hi, awesome results. Uh, congrats. Thank you. Green eco friendly Bitcoin is going to become more and more important. Are you looking to one, invite other green miners to TerraPool, example, Hive blockchain, and two, encourage other miners to switch uh, using green energy? Uh, the answer is yes and yes. Uh, we do obviously want to have as much hash power as we can in TerraPool. Um, you know, that's the kind of point of a mining pool is to aggregate hash power. And in this case, to aggregate, you know, clean energy or hash power powered by clean energy. So we've, uh, we've been talking to other miners. We have, a you know, uh, an outreach plan and, um, and, uh, we think there's a great opportunity to build, you know, the, the, a really considerable amount of hash power from, uh, from, from green energy. Um, two, encourage other miners to switch to green, using green energy. Well, I think that's part of if TerraPool is obviously to show people that, that there's an, an opportunity to, to, to mine with clean, green, with clean and green energy and to band together. Um, and then if there's opportunities that come out of that, business opportunities that come out of that, uh, you know, obviously that's something that, that we're interested in pursuing. So the first is to is to be compliant, to have standards, to have the technology in place, and to band together, and then kind of go from there. That's a good question, though. Thank you. Um, next question: uh, A bloke called Tom. Uh, I think yourself, Elon Musk, and Jack should talk green mining in Texas and beyond. About time that the hash rate was distributed evenly across the across the globe, i.e., more in the U.S. and Europe, plus negate the coal usage. Hashtag just saying. I mean, Tom, you're right. I, I've spoken out before about, you know, mining with coal. I don't think it's a good thing for the planet. I don't think it's a good thing from a business perspective. I don't think it's a good thing for, you know, the story, the crypto story, the Bitcoin story. So the more we can move away from fossil fuels, I mean, obviously that's, you know, something that we, we're very passionate about and we've spoken a lot about and we're doing something about, um, I think the better. And, um, you know, you, there's lots of myths out there about, you know, energy usage and, and crypto um, and, and Bitcoin. So the more we can kind of pr produce a counter narrative and tell another story and, and actually have, you know, uh, facts and data behind that story and, and, you know, examples on the ground of, of green mining, which there's lots of, um, the better. Mike Wainwright. Hey, Mike. Thanks for your questions. At MIKK2K2. Hey, Captain Pete. Only three from me this month. One. Do you see a world where Argo could be carbon negative? Um, I think carbon, you know, neg being com becoming carbon negative is interesting. Um, there's kind of a whole world of net zero, carbon neutral, carbon negative, um, renewable energy credits that you know we're wrapping our heads around. And uh, the more we can, you know, the the earlier we can understand it and engage in it, the better. And obviously, that's what we're doing. You know, we've been working with Guidehouse. I've I've been you know, very public about that and, um, and building a climate strategy plan. I think, I think we'll work to get, you know, carbon neutral or, or net zero emissions first and kind of go from there. But certainly, um, we're trying to go as far as we can in that direction. It's a good question. Um, next question. Uh, you mentioned mar margins may drop off in the, in, in the year results. Is this you being open to how amazing our margins have been and how hard it would be to maintain long term or, or something else? I mean, look, you just have to look back at our margins, you know, in the RNSs from last year, uh, you know, and we just put out our 2020 results. The overall margin for the year was 41 percent. We've been over 80 percent so far this year. And generally, you know, when the price of Bitcoin goes up, mining margins, um, 
uh, or, or sorry, difficulty goes up over time. We just had this event in China where you know some hash power came off. M a mining difficulty actually went down this this past week, so that was unusual given you know where the price of Bitcoin has gone. So I, I can't predict where the margins are going to go, but you know in general, again, when the price of Bitcoin goes up, more people mine, marg uh, mine difficulty goes up, and margins go down. So it's um, that's generally kind of the dynamics at work. Um, but you know it's obviously hard to predict in the future, and and we would ex you know we want to be cautious and conservative in our plans moving forward. So we don't want to be overly optimistic. We want to be realistic. So I think it's realistic to cons think that you know with all of the orders that are out there for machines, mining difficulty will go up. Um, and unless the price goes, you know, outpaces that uh, rise in difficulty, then mining margins will tighten. Um, it's just kind of how 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 the game works. Um, how close I was I, was I on the solar farm tweets? I mean, I just answered that question looking at all kind of, you know, opportunities. But you know, certainly the plans in the short term, as I've said, is to use grid power, uh, you know, from from existing um, existing infrastructure that's already built in Texas. Um, all right. Is there any chance we could get an update on the list of significant shareholders? Would make my research a bit easier. So, Mike, that you said you asked three. You said you're going to ask three, but then you threw in a fourth. Um, so the significant sh shareholders uh, list on the website is up to date. That's something we update, you know, periodically as information comes in. So I, I can't say anything more other than what what is on the website is is currently up to date. John Wick, Phi Investor, John. Uh, always, uh, you know, engaged on Twitter. Uh, love it. Um, I, and I'm sorry if I'm a little low energy. It's it's 10:30 at night. I just finished a bunch of other things, so only have got to this now. Um, so I'm not quite as energetic as normal. And also, other people have gone to bed around here, so um, it's a little. Uh, I'm I'm talking a little quieter than normal. Um, John Wick. Hi, Peter G. Wall. Hope you and the family in Argo are keeping well. Thank you, John. You too. No question this time around. Just want to say thank you and keep up the magnificent job that you're all doing. Ah, that's nice. Thank you, John. Uh, appreciate your support. Um, really appreciate your support. Um, Matt Stewart at Matt Stewart 112. <laughs> Could you si survive a zombie uh, apocalypse? Could you survive a zombie apocalypse? What would your strategy be? So actually, uh, that's a good question, Matt. We actually have a zombie apocalypse um, fan or a zombie movie fan at Argo. So I'm going to pass it over to Laura. She's going to answer this question. Hi, everyone. Laura here. Uh, so in terms to survive in a zombie apocalypse, it definitely depends on the type of zombie. Uh, voodoo zombies are definitely harder to kill because they're magic based. So uh, the goal would just be to slow them down and run away. Uh, my top three things for a to survive in a zombie apocalypse would be weapons. Um, guns are absolutely useless unless you have continuous access to bullets. Uh, so I would use something like uh, an aluminum bat or a machete. Um, if we're assuming that it's the standard virus that bite that if a zombie bites you, it spreads, then I would definitely go with those two weapons. The second thing would be important to secure a location, likely an enclosed area that's easy to secure and to construct like strong defenses. Um, also to plan, have like unlimited escape plans if something were to go down. And lastly, one of my biggest frustrations in zombie movies and zombie lore is that people who fight against zombies aren't heavily armored enough. They're usually wearing t-shirts and tank tops, which I understand to a point, but I would be covered the F up because I don't want to be bit. So <laughs> that's definitely something that I would prioritize. And then lastly, I think that this book, The Zombie Survival Guide, is a necessity for every household and is a great resource to fight against the undead. All right, there you go. Thank you, Laura. Okay, next question. Um, Joseph Iona, Iona? At Joey Iona. Uh, Ahoy, Captain Pete. As a CEO and filmmaker, are you creating the, the info bites uh, yourself? And using your experience, do you have any plans for full for a full-on Argo, Argo documentaries in the future? Um, so, Joseph, it's a good question. Um, yes, I did. Uh, was a filmmaker and, and journalist in the past. Um, I am not creating the Infobytes videos myself. We actually hired uh, someone I used to work with um, back in the day, and uh, and he's creating them. Um, and I hope you like them. We've got a whole series of them coming out. In terms of documentaries in the future, I can't say whether whether we may or may not have one coming out. 
Um, but we are proud of the way in which we communicate. We think that we, uh, well, we take it seriously, and, and we think that you know, being a, uh, a you know modern company in, in the current kind of market that we're in, in the in the particular space that we're in, there's lots of room for education and communication and transparency. So yeah, so video is a great a great uh, medium for that, and uh, and we you know we put rough videos together like this. We've been putting out those. Um, you know, info bites, which are or which are more polished and kind of like little bite pieces, and maybe in the future we'll we'll do something um, even a little more polished. So so it's a good question, but um, thanks thanks Joey uh, Joseph for asking that. Um, Mark at Marco Polo, hi Peter, RNS looks great, and the Q and A videos really set you aside from the peers, from your peers. Thank you, uh, uh, Mark. I would like to ask. I would like to ask, would you and Margo consider running chain link nodes? Argo would earn link for delivering reliable and tamper-proof info for dApps and blockchains like Polkadot, BSC by running nodes. Thanks. So, so Margo, um, you know, obviously, um, I've said in the past that you know we're 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 a blockchain technology company. So we're you know we've made an investment in 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 uh, in. Pluto Digital Assets. We're open to other potential things. We were an early investor in Polkadot. Um, you know, if you just look at our track record over the last three years, we haven't limited ourselves to just mining. So, um, we are open to other types of you know uh, cr crypto investments in in kind of the non proof of work sphere, uh, like the kind of ones you you have uh, you have laid out. So, um, you know. It, it's again. I, I I can't make any kind of announcements about what we may or may not be doing, other than we consider ourselves a blockchain technology company, and so never want to put ourselves in in only the the, the mining uh, box. Uh, next question, uh, Joey Moga at Joey Moga. Does the company have any plans to expand outside of crypto mining? So similar to what I just said, um, you know, we're not going to limit ourselves uh, to to any kind of one particular thing, but obviously, right now, our focus is to run as efficient um, and you know uh, effective a crypto mining kind of side of the business as possible. Um, so yeah, I, I don't want to kind of get into you know where we may be going, but um, but uh, yeah, w I I do consider us, and I've said publicly many times, I do consider us you know first and foremost a blockchain technology company. Okay, that's video number one. Uh, thank you everyone for, for your questions and stay tuned for video number two.